Good morning, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and today we have a little bit of primary news to talk about. I'm not going to talk about the biggest news that happened yesterday. I just don't feel like talking about it. Plus, most people are going to know what what I'm going to say about something like that. Um, at least two are repeated viewers of this channel, so no real point in uh, talking about it. So, anyway, we got pretty much the, exult, uh, the results that we expected in Georgia in the uh, primaries. Incumbent Senator uh, Raphael Warnock, he faced no real opposition, no competitive opposition um, in getting a renomination, and Herschel Walker... Uh, destroyed um, his competition. Matter of fact, looking at it, Herschel Walker got almost 100,000 more votes in his primary than both Warnock and his opposition got combined. Um, I wanted to see by county who was strong where. Republicans were pretty strong all over the map, including in the um, metro area, the Atlanta metro area. Um, surprisingly, he was strong in Savannah, which kind of surprises me uh, that, wa that uh, the Republicans were strong in Savannah. Shockingly strong in this part of Georgia as well. This is the second congressional district, which is a VRA district. So for the Republicans to be doing that well down there, especially because some of these counties, right, these three counties normally vote Democratic. Um, this county, if we look at it, voted blue in, well, this is the 20, this is the runoff from last year for this uh, specific seat. Um, as you can see, um, yeah, a little bit of a change down there. Big change up in this area. And a few counties up in here, really interesting to me. And also, oh, what's the name of this county? I want to say it's Bibb. But yeah, so this is really kind of weird to me. This area is fluidity, but normally there's a few more blue counties uh, sprinkled in through there, and normally it's also more competitive. And looking at this, um, the amount of votes in the the total amount of votes in the the effective primary for uh, the special election was f almost five million. So that's a lot of votes. But that was in a presidential election year, and it was very well publicized. About half a million fewer votes in the runoff, which is actually really good turnout for the runoff. Um, but turnout was slightly depressed. in both of those runoffs. And if we go to... the 2016 election, half a million in the primary versus 310,000 Democratic primary, about four million votes cast in the general election and this year we're looking at one point one plus we're looking at about we're looking at under two million for the um, just under two million for total number of let's 
714 plus 1.16. Uh, 14, that would be 7181 plus about 1.9 million votes total for the primary. Turnout's probably going to be a little bit down. I think we'll be around 4 million votes, somewhere in that, uh, for the general election. So. It's about a 400,000 vote gap. We'll just say a little bit over 400,000 vote gap out of 4 million. So we're talking about, that's 10%. The Democrats have to find a way in a bad national environment to make up 400,000 votes. In a bad national environment, Democrats have to make up 400,000 votes. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot until you realize that that's probably going to be about 10% of the total number of voters in the midterms in Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. So a better question is, how do you make up 10% by November? And the other thing I was doing, and the reason why I had previous elections pulled up, is I wanted to see, okay, so, in the first round, I believe, actually, crazy, um, let me see, um, what was, I didn't quite, I don't quite remember, but it's 2.1, say 2.3 for the Republicans, and for the Democrats you have 2.3. Oh, round that to 1.9 to 2.1. Yeah, the Republicans actually outvoted the Democrats in the special election, in the primary, which calling it a primary is a little bit weird because it was held <laughs> on November 3rd. It was, it's really weird. Um, but the problem there is that... Um, Republicans outvoted the Democrats and they lost, but I believe I am correct in saying that other than that, generally, if the Republicans, or generally if a party uh, outvotes the other in a primary, that is it. Now, the other problem with trying to figure out who's going to win that primary, or win the general between Walker and Warnock, is that if we exclude polls from last year, so basically these, and just focus on this year, University of Georgia, nonpartisan affiliated, of course, Walker ahead by three, Quinnipiac, nonpartisan, but tends to lean Democratic in their polls, uh, Walker ahead by a percent. I have no clue who this pollster is, but they found Walker ahead by a percent. A Democratic pollster found Walker ahead by four. Mm -hmm. So did Emerson. A Republican pollster, this is an outlier poll, Walker ahead by 10%. That's a little bit of an outlier. Only poll other than a Democratic internal poll from last year and a sketchy poll, a pollster that I'm not sure I trust. Again, also from last year, only one poll has Warnock ahead, and that's from Survey USA, 
I forget who spawns who, who wanted the poll done. And Survey USA isn't the best pollster around. Um, Emerson, Quinnipiac, those are great, and those those are very well regarded pollsters. So yeah, looking at it, the polling favors Herschel Walker, and so far so does the primary. And if you look at the aggregate of polls, um, Walker's pretty far ahead. Well, not pretty far ahead. That's a half percent. I also don't know why they're switching switching it up like that because the average is showing that uh, Walker is ahead. Um, and that doesn't even include the uh, survey where he was 10% uh, ahead. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it includes one or two Dem polls looking at it. Yeah, because I, j I noticed here, it includes a Republican poll, this graphical cert thing, but five, uh, sorry, Rickler politics doesn't. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable that uh, Herschel Walker is going to win this race. Um, if we go to Texas runoffs, um, some interesting stuff is happening. Um, right now, Republicans are well outvoting uh, Democrats across the state of Texas. Um, and if we look at the 28th district, which is this district down here, along the border, it widens out, right? You may be seeing a recount on the Democratic side because that is as close as it gets. That's about 200 votes total out of 45,000. <laughs> so, and Cuellar is fighting against uh, Cisneros. Um, the Republicans think they have a chance to flip the 28th, which, I don't know, that's a lot of votes to overcome. Um, but if we go back to, I guess, uh, Texas, go to the original one, and looking at the primary, Republicans put up almost a million over the Democrats in Texas. That's a lot of votes. I know Texas is a big state, but that is a lot of that is a lot of votes to overcome in Texas. Um, and then here we go. If we look at the twenty eighth district. In the Democratic primary, the initial primary had a little bit more votes, but not not as many more as I thought would have existed over the runoff. 49,000, so right now the runoff's about 4,000 behind. Almost exactly 4,000 behind. And then if you go over to the Republican side, um, 25,000 votes. They did better in the yeah Republican turnout in the runoff is very low, which is surprising for me. But whatever it is, what it is. Anyway. I'm going to go ahead and call it there. If you like content, likes, comments, subscriptions, they always do help, and I greatly appreciate them. Um, take it easy. Have a nice day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.